Okay, some of you noticed a difference in the last video, the walking around video, of what's up here. Some amount of months ago, I switched from my Focal Twins to some Dutch and Dutch. Um, fantastic speakers. Again, why do I keep turning these lights off? There we go. Now, let me be clear and say, like, these Dutch and Dutch were amazing. Like, the whole thing about this is because I like them so much, but there are a couple issues that I just couldn't get over that didn't show themselves immediately. But after sitting with these speakers for months, it's almost even more frustrating because I like them so much, uh, yet these particular issues and how the company itself handled those issues led them to be here, and now they're gonna get boxed up and sent back. Forgive me here, the studio's a bit of a disaster again. It tends to be a thing, end of the week, I'm uh, like, cleaning up here, but this in no way is to say these are bad speakers. On the contrary, these are some of the best speakers uh, I've had the pleasure of mixing on and mastering and doing countless projects and being able to hear, and I I've learned more about engineering just working on these. The pros of these speakers, I mean, they are flat all the way down. <laughs> you can sit in front of these for a very long amount of time and experience very little ear fatigue. Um, the transients that are coming at you are very fast and, and very laid to bear so that compression timing attack release it. You just, you hear everything to an extent that I hadn't heard on my Focal Twins before. Because those, those Focal Twins, although very, very fun to listen to, aren't really the most honest things you could sit in front of. And these are the old twins that I've had for almost a decade. These speakers are incredible. So what's wrong? I think the only way to talk about what's wrong with them is to do it in a context that I haven't heard it on every set. Remember, I have a set here. I also work on a set at a place where I do broadcast audio. I have not heard these issues with that set. And I know other people working with Dutch & Dutch that have just not had this same issue. All in all, that doesn't matter. I had the issue, I had the issue, I had to get it fixed. What I noticed was a sound coming from the speakers. And it took me a long time to figure out when this sound happened that because the Dutch & Dutch are so integrated with DSP and there's a lot you can do with them on the app and that's really, really cool, because of that, it is definitely reliant on that working flawlessly. And I can tell you that the back end of the software is not built out to the point where it should be for speakers that cost this much. Which is honestly a shame because if that one thing was figured out, I think these speakers could dominate uh, a lot of other things that they are priced closely to. But another thing on that, there's recently been a price increase on these speakers that makes that gap even harder to fill. And given the problems that I was experiencing, meant it was time to leave. So I noticed while standing in my normal position, because yeah, I have a standing desk, while standing here and mixing generally, I would notice like a pop. I honestly thought it was my desk settling because I built this whole thing myself, right? I'm generally an okay carpenter, but I thought it was the wood settling. There's a lot of weight on this thing. It can definitely hold it. It's on casters. I can move it if I want to, but hearing like a woody pop is not something that registers as something's going on with my monitors. It wasn't until much later that I realized when that happened, the center of my image would shift slightly. There would be some phasey issues. The center was off. It was really hard to comprehend what was happening at the time, especially if I wasn't there to hear the noise. To so walk out, adjust a mic, the noise would happen while I'm gone. I come back only to have this uphill battle of there's phasey things happening. My center's off and you don't really know what's happening. But what I think was happening was the internal clocking of the speakers was getting kicked out for some reason. Now, one of the things you notice if you've ever had the pleasure of working on these speakers, the Dutch and Dutch ACs, is that the center is very strong and very pronounced. And when that center's off, you don't tend to think it's the monitor, you tend to think it's something that you're doing. Am I introducing phase somewhere? Is there something wrong with my microphones? Is there a cable issue? It sends you down so many rabbit holes, it honestly took so much time. Not until I realized that when this pop would happen, 
that honestly sounds like sounded like that. <laughs> that something was happening in the speaker. Something was causing that center to get messed up. So what's going on here? I have a couple theories. There's an app that you can use to control these speakers. It's called a Send. You pull it up on your phone, and it's honestly pretty handy. It's not gonna find any speakers right now because they're not plugged in, they're not turned on. The things you can do from the app are go into specific EQ curves that you want. You can turn the speakers up or down. There's a lot you can do from the app. There's also a lot of like pay to play things that come with this. You can get remote room correction happening. Honestly, stuff that is pretty cool that you can do with these speakers. The problem is you can also update the firmware from this app. And as far as I knew, I had updated these speakers to the latest firmware. At that point, I was still having issues. I reached out to Dutch and Dutch multiple times. I was basically told, did you turn them off? Did you turn them back on again? Yes, that does reset the clock. And that seemed to fix my problem for the 30 to 45 minutes until I had the pop would come again. The... And then I'm right back to where I was before. <laughs> Imagine, this is pretty frustrating because it takes a complete power cycle to fix these things. Sad part is it actually ended up being a stupid easy fix. I don't know why. I I'd always had issues with the DSP in here and I kind of just ignored it. Not ignored the problems, but I ignored the DSP. I figured if I just kept the levels where I wanted, I'm not gonna change the EQ. Where that does get handy is in places like the broadcast booth. If somebody else is in there, you can change the EQ curve remotely or do it from a website where you're controlling these locally because they always have internet access. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's honestly, the tools here are awesome. The implementation is where it really sucks and is frustrating and where you don't get a whole lot of customer service. So it wasn't until I finally had taken these things off the shelf that the fix was shown to me. Uh, a good friend who also uses these basically showed me another way to update the firmware. When I got in and looked at each one of these speakers individually, they were running different firmware. For some reason, well, the firmware that was being reported on a send on my phone was different than the firmware that was actually on these speakers. I don't know why. I don't know how that happened, but it happened. And it shouldn't have been that hard to figure out that that was the issue. Now it makes complete sense that they're running two different firmwares on these speakers. So when something happens and clock drift happens and it gets far enough out, my center is gone. Again, all these are complete theories. I have no idea what's actually happening, but this is my best guess. Dutch and Dutch wasn't able to help me. A good friend was. These speakers are still awesome, but it took me so long to figure out that issue and I couldn't trust them that I ha I've moved on to something else. So after all that and after all these headaches, who is this for? Who are these speakers for? And I'm genuinely a little confused because when I first got these things, it was immediately apparent to me that these things are perfect for the studio. They're perfect for tracking. I know some of the questions came in with, well, how's the latency, the onboard DSP? I never noticed any latency. The issues there were null to me. I honestly never cared about the DSP. If there was a version of the speaker that was just the speaker, holy cow. <laughs> I understand all the rest of this is what makes Dutch and Dutch, Dutch and Dutch. They're going after a hi-fi customer, right? And that customer loves tweakability. That customer has a whole lot of disposable income to buy a very luxury product that honestly sounds unbelievable. They're gonna hear transients from the music that they like to listen to. It's incredible. But what they also did in that process was they kind of built a f perfect studio monitor. It's all this other crap that's in the way that we don't necessarily want in a studio monitor. And those two worlds are just colliding. Pair that with getting little to no help on the back end. Honestly, I wouldn't be as bummed out as I am if the speakers didn't sound incredible. But for the price that these cost, especially the price that they cost now because the price has gone up on these, the DSP implementation the constant errors that you can get with the software included here and the lack of any help from the company themselves, I was kind of forced into changing my monitoring setup. That said, I kind of got what I wanted. There's definitely more to talk about in here as I get to know these, but at this point, oh wow, look at this mood lighting. At this point, I've mixed quite a few things on this. Actually had the chance to work on some of the biggest records that I've ever worked on, on these speakers. 
and they turned out pretty good. I've done a fair bit of tracking through these. I've done a fair bit of mastering through these. And there's a whole other video coming here. Sadly, a lot of the strengths that I notice in the Dutch and Dutch that I really like are present here without the DSP headaches. I haven't been a Focal customer previously for a decade. That customer service I know really, really well. And with an investment like this, that's a pretty big piece of the pie. So am I sad to see these go? I don't know that sad's the right word, but I am bummed because these could easily be the best speaker that I'd ever worked on. A lot of these things, you're not gonna find out in the first few months that you're using these speakers. You may not ever encounter these issues with these speakers. Like I said, I regularly encounter two sets of these. These had the issue. The other ones that I work on, I've never noticed an issue on them, period. Don't use the DSP on either set, so who's to know? There's a lot of pros with these things. Obviously your tastes and your room will change and where you place them in the room is a huge part of this and all the other things that make monitors monitors, right? The decisions that we have to make regardless of what speaker is up on that desk. I really liked these. I really liked them. I still really like them. But the number one thing you have to be able to do with your monitors is trust them and trust that they're gonna work 100% of the time. I think now these are completely fine. I was walked through the fix and I can't get it to reproduce the issue anymore. But that didn't come from the company. That's the big thing here. That didn't come from Dutch and Dutch. Why? I don't know. It could be that studios are not the main market for these. I still stand by the fact that these work super well in studios. But the thought process behind having a speaker, I need to know it's exactly the same every time I step up to work on it. And honestly, at this point, being stung by the DSP, I'm a little afraid to continue here. I don't want this to be slamming a company or saying that these are in any way inferior. Again, I don't like making negative videos. I hope I don't come across as being negative in this video. What I hope to offer is constructive criticism or things to think about if you are in the market for them. I think my instance, hopefully, is pretty rare. And I did tell some friends I would love to see what happens next here. I would love to see if Dutch and Dutch double down on the hi-fi market or if they realize the potential they have in some other areas. But for now, if you are interested in seeing what we are running currently, we'll talk about that in another video. Peace.